What's going on guys, it's me Lone and I need to make a quick video because I am going away this weekend and I just needed to have something up on my channel otherwise it would have been three days with me uploading nothing. So I hope you're okay with this, me doing a quick video, a bit of a ramble and hopefully trying to record it in one take. And I'm also being pretty quiet at the moment because I don't want to wake people up. Anyways, what I want to talk about is Fallout 4's DLC, Far Harbor, the season pass, things like that, and essentially asking whether Far Harbor is a make it or break it. And what I mean by that question is, if Far Harbor is a bad DLC or even average, is that just going to completely sour people's taste of Bethesda, of Fallout 4, and of Fallout 4 DLC? and of course the Fallout 4 season pass. Please put your thoughts about this topic in the comments below. I would really appreciate your views, um, but we'll get into my opinions. So for me personally, no, it's not going to sour my opinion about Fallout 4 or the season pass. I've said this in past videos, I actually liked Fallout 4. Um, yes, it's different from past Fallout games. I can accept that. I can accept the reasons why some people are a bit upset and why some people might want to see, you know, Obsidian take the reins like they did with New Vegas. I completely get that. And I'm not trying to stir shit with this video. I think that's a discussion for another day. But I can't deny the fact that, you know, I like this game. And because of that, I don't have that negativity behind my sentiments. So even if Far Harbor for me was a complete average DLC, then I'd be like, all right, cool, no big deal right plus I'm not trying to get negative over over nothing anyways but at least from what I see in the community it seems that if Far Harbor turns out to be bad or average but more so bad then I think a lot of people are just gonna not give up like it, it's really tough to say but I think a lot of people will just kind of say all right Fallout 4 is definitely not the game it could have been um, and again, these aren't my personal sentiments. It's just what I think uh, some portions of the community might think, if that is the case. And that stems from a lot of reasons. Again, some of the disappointments with Fallout 4 due to the voice acting and things like that. Um, or the dialogue, I should say, in, in particular. And also as well, we've gotten two small pieces of DLC and we haven't gotten anything really substantive. So if the first substantive piece of DLC we get is a bit of a flop, then yeah, you know, people might be upset and people might give up on Fallout 4's future content. Although, if you do have a season pass, you're kind of invested in this now, and that's obviously the point of season passes, um, but you can't essentially give up if you've invested the money and time as well, let's face it, into the season pass, because I'm very confident that at E3 we will be getting more DLC announcements from Fallout 4. I cannot see Far Harbor being the last piece of content for Fallout 4. There's no way. Also as well, I don't think it's going to be the last big piece of DLC for Fallout 4. I'm still standing by my prediction that we're going to be seeing four big pieces of DLC for Fallout 4, like we saw with Fallout 3, like we saw with Fallout New Vegas, and that includes Far Harbor, by the way. So from now, we'll be getting on top of Far Harbor another three pieces of DLC. Big pieces of DLC, that is, not including things like Automatron and uh, Wasteland Workshop. That's just my opinion anyways. And I think that additional content as well for Fallout 4 will be released well into 2017. I think that's a, a big possibility, again, because I think I think Fallout 4 is being treated with much more longevity than past Fallout games, especially when you look at 3 and New Vegas, where effectively most of the DLC was released within a year of the games being launched. So I think that's, you know, the case there. So if you're a season pass holder, you might be disappointed if Far Harbor is a bit of a flop, but I don't think it's a make it or break it in the sense that you'll stop downloading the DLC because effectively from this stage, you own all of it. So you might as well download it and try it out. But more so in terms of people that might not own the season pass, and I'm assuming most of you do because of the price increase. Those of you that don't own the season pass and are purchasing these individually, if you were, for example, this might be make it or break it. It might be make it or break it if Far Harbor is bad. I don't think it will be. I think we, I know Bethesda's really, really good at hyping things up, 
but the whole fact that this is bigger than Shivering Isles, the whole fact that they've had all of this time to work on it and have just given us Automatron and Wasteland Workshop to really, I think, put a lot of time and effort into Far Harbor, I'm very hopeful that this is a good DLC. What I am worried though is that people are going to let their bad tastes of Flight 4 seep into this DLC and affect their opinion of it. I think that's a strong possibility. I hope that doesn't happen, but if I see one more comment that modders could have done this DLC, <laughs> I'll lose my shit. Um, but all joking aside, I'm looking forward to it. For me, it's not a make it or break it. For some others, it might be a make it or break it. If you own the season pass, whether it's bad or not, you're invested. So you're going to be downloading it, trying it, even if it's bad for you. Bethesda, again, I think I'm so confident they're going to release more DLC for Fallout 4 because they have an entire E3 conference to, to pack in. And if they don't make a big bang and a big splash with Fallout 4, you know, in a huge way, then I think they're in trouble a little bit. So anyways, again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been the Lone Vol Wanderer. Please take care of yourself. And as always, keep fighting the good fight.